It's Howie season, and it's once again time for him to show why he is the best general manager in the National Football League. We lay out the roadmap to turn it around this Eagles team. All that and more on this edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into another edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast. I'm your host, longtime Eagles fan, Gino Camilleri, expert also over at Bleacher Report as well. Let's just say I am the scouting director here at Locked On Eagles as well. And that's going to be the focus of today's show. Howie Roseman, he's scouting the draft. They're scouting free agency and they're trying to clean up things in-house. What is the roadmap forward as I play role of general manager Howie Roseman like Lou DiBiase did yesterday on Lockdown Eagles? And we thank all of our everydayers for making LOE your first listen each and every day. And this edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use code all lowercase lockdown NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. And as I said, I'm turning the hat around. It's time, folks, to play Howie Roseman. It's time to buckle up for GMGC to get in the driver's seat. To take on what Howie Roseman has to take on in 2024. And that is getting this team back to where they need to be. And where they need to be is competing for Super Bowls. Because the reality is, folks, instead of talking about the Super Bowl this week. And getting ready to take on Kansas City in a rematch. No, we're in our third week now of preparing for the draft. Another week removed from losing a terrible game to the Tampa Bay Bucks. And a lot of it stems from problems that stemmed long before the season began. And where does that stem? It stems from Howie Roseman, the general manager, the guy who everything in the end falls on. And in the end, it comes down to what they had in-house in 2023. And let's start there. There's this old adage that apparently it's an old adage, but my fiance told Miss wife, excuse me, I got to get used to it still. My wife told me this a couple weeks ago. She says, in life, if you want to bring in new things, you have to take out the old. So for example, we're reorganizing our house, some old furniture, get it out the house, bring in some new furniture. Well, in this example, that furniture is football players. That commodity is big time players for big time money. And let's talk about what's going on in-house. Well, you have a lot of free agent decisions to make. There's a whole long list. I'm not going to get into every single one of them. But there's three main categories that you're going to have to get into when you are making the decision on these guys. The unrestricted free agents, do you want to keep them? Do you want to let them walk? And the guys who are going to be free agents next year, can you get them extended and or restructure them to kind of move some money around? So let's start. With the option of walking. I still hadn't made the decision before I sat down to do this. But I think I made the decision in the last couple minutes. I'm going to let Brandon Graham walk. It's a tough decision. It stinks, I know. But the Eagles, and Howie Roseman especially, has to set a precedent that this no longer is what they did in 2017 to 18. When they just relied on the guys that they had in the building to try and run it back. BG, it would be awesome to get him his 15th year. But moral of the story is they have to get better play out of that position. We could stay on this moral subject all day long, but this is business. We have to move on. Alameda Zacchaeus, see you later. DeAndre Swift, that one stinks. He's got to go. Boston Scott, got to go. Quez Watkins, got to go. Nicholas Morrow, got to go. Rashad Penny, got to go. Julio Jones, got to go. A whole bunch more that I would say let go. Sean Bradley, just go down that list. It's time to get players 30 through 53 and reshuffle the deck. Although there are a lot of guys that I say, yeah, let them walk. Let them go. See you later. There are a couple that I would keep, and for good reason. 
I'm going to start with the biggest name, Braden Man, your punter, of course. Sign him to a one-year deal, bring him back. Just kidding. I would say, out of all of these guys, the biggest name would probably be DeAndre Sweat. That was the toughest decision for me, but I think the running back market, and we'll get to it, is going to lighten up. They're probably going to find another guy in that market, similar to what they found with DeAndre Swift, similar to what they found in the past. I don't think they're going to shell out that money because they want to spend money elsewhere, and that's in the trenches, and that's potentially saving some of that money that you save by letting those guys walk and paying Fletcher Cox for one more year to still help these young guys continue to kick it into gear. Jordan Davis needs to pick it up a little bit. Milton Williams should take on a bigger role. So should Marlon Sleep, Pelotu, Jalen Carter, who else they bring in. But I think Fletcher Cox still has a good amount of ball left in him, especially if he's paying, playing 35% of the snaps. Should be a good amount for him. No more. I think any more than that, if you're talking money-wise, if you're talking snaps-wise, you don't even entertain the conversation because of what you have there. At linebacker, you don't have much. I think you bring back Zach Cunningham just to have a body there that is familiar. Nicobe Dean, yes, he will be coming back, but I thought Cunningham, he warranted another year. Is he going to get a lot of money on the free agent market? No, he'll probably get close to the veteran minimum. And I think that's worth keeping him around because Sean Bradley's going to be gone. Nicholas Morrow is going to be gone. You're probably going to turn around more guys in that room. Shaq Leonard, he's out the door. Bring back Zach Cunningham for one more year. And the last guy that I'm signing is Sue Opata. I'm just signing depth guys. I'm not paying any of these free agents big time contracts. I'll take what you can get in 2025 comp picks. But for right now, you have to take what you can get with these guys. And right now it's it's role players. That's frankly what it is in this free agent class. And I'm going to toss some more guys into this free agent class because I'm going to do two things. I'm going to release Kevin Byard and James Bradbury, much like Lou did yesterday, both with June 1 designations. That's going to save you $14 million on Byard. It'll save you nothing on Bradbury. James Bradbury, I think we've talked at nauseum about what he limits you on defense because he's older. He can't run. You got to get younger at that position. Kevin Byard, it would be nice to keep him around, but to save $14 million, where you're currently at $20.28 million, with a couple moves, like the Byard move, like the Bradbury move, like some restructures and extensions, you could get this to around 40 ish million dollars and have a lot of money to play with in this upcoming free agency pool. I think Lou did a good job yesterday explaining the Kevin Byer, James Bradbury situation, a lot of breaking down the free agent class and the extensions. I'm with him. Extend Devante, extend Sweat, extend Reddick, extend Dickerson. I was same wavelength. Didn't even know he picked those guys until I listened to the show afterwards. But two things I'm going to do different than Lou. Yes, I'm going to hold on to Avante Maddox, but I'm going to restructure him. You could save $4.46 million with the restructure as well with Dallas Goddard. Now you can move that money around if you wanted to extend them. But frankly, do you want to extend either of them? Avante Maddox, he's very injury prone. So is Dallas Goddard. The Eagles tried to replace Zach Ertz with Dallas Goddard at the same age that Goddard currently is. Behind Avante Maddox, You have a couple guys. You got a free agent that you brought in off the street last year in Isaiah Rogers. You got Zach McPherson, who is going to be coming back off of that Achilles injury. You have some young guys there that present more of an upside, in my opinion, than Avante. You know what you have in him. One more year, though, you save that 4.46. You're more than likely going to get a compensatory selection when he leaves. I'm sure some team is going to sign him come free agency this time next year. But for now... You restructure him, you restructure Dallas Goddard with the release of Kevin Byard, the release of Brad Barry, the extension with moving around some money of those other guys. You should get to around 40-ish million dollars. You know what 40-ish million dollars can get you in free agency? A whole lot when Howie Roseman is your general manager. So that's what we're going to get into when we get back on this episode of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Today's edition of LOE is brought to you by our friends over at DoorDash. The big game is coming up this Sunday, and you want to get prepared. You want to get the chips, the dip, the burger, the dogs, the pizza, the wings, the drinks. But you don't want to have to run around to 100 different places like myself. 
All you do, take your phone, download the DoorDash app, and use the code LOCK23. And that's going to give you 50% off, 50 percent off up to a ten dollar value when you spend fifteen dollars or more on your first order once again code lock 23 is going to get you 50 percent off up to a ten dollar value when you spend fifteen dollars or more on your first order that's easy in today's economy but make sure you're spending your money on some good food relax this sunday get everything you need delivered right to your door thanks to you our friends over at doordash today's episode of the lockdown eagles podcast is also brought to you by our friends over at prize picks the big game is right around the corner and prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way that you can turn your money into 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks take ten dollars turn that into one thousand dollars as well if patrick mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game you win on prize picks and you're probably saying gino this is the most ridiculous offer i've ever heard how do i get in on the action today well all you have to do is pick more or less with four one two three four correct picks and you can turn your money into 100 times your money during big game sunday go to prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl and use code locked on nfl for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars I'll tell you what, folks, I'm going to be putting in my picks over at Prize Picks, and I'm going to be making four of them. More or less, make sure you use that code locked on NFL to get a first time deposit match up to $100. Welcome on back, everyone. Gino Camilleri here, locked on Eagles expert, host, scouting director, whatever title you want to give me. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day here at the Lockdown Eagles podcast. And if you didn't know this, Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And you can find it as well as Amazon Fire TV. That's unbelievable to say that out loud. Lockdown Sports today is here for you with 24-7 coverage. Literally 24-7. You could turn it on at any time. Guys like myself, local experts, will be on there. Find the local Lockdown Sports Today channel now on Amazon Fire TV. For Lockdown Eagles, we're talking general manager Howie Roseman season, but right now it's GMGC season. We talked about the decisions in-house, how we're going to clean up and get some money. And now with that money, we go have a good old time. It's like a kid at Chuck E. Cheese, got a big old bucket of coins, Parents letting them off the leash. That's Howie Roseman season for you, folks. Lou went down the safety avenue. Kind of stole my swagger a little bit, Lou. Not going to say anything, but impending, impeding on the Camilleri brand with that safety signing yesterday. That's all right. We'll change it up. Though, I think Lou made a great point. I believe the Eagles are in the vicinity to strike on one of, at one of two positions as well, a safety or linebacker being Patrick Queen and or Antoine Winfield Jr. And we said that on the show the other day. He took the Antoine Winfield Jr. route. I'm going to take the Patrick Queen route. And how I did this when it came to free agency, I ranked these guys on a one to five scale. And I literally used a numeral that was the number numeral of how much I'm going to pay these guys. Patrick Queen, he's $5 numerals right there. $5 signs. You're paying him all the money. You're going to pay him 14. You're going to pay him $15 million to come here and be the guy to be the piece that you were missing last year. He's running rough shot in Baltimore with Roquan Smith there, but Roquan Smith is getting a whole bunch of money as well. Can he return to form and be the guy maybe next to Nicobe Dean that frees him up and that could be your Roquan Smith equivalent to that Patrick Queen. He was the only guy that we've ever mocked as a linebacker to the Philadelphia Eagles in the first round in any locked on mock draft. Patrick Queen, he's the guy. He is the guy. And he makes so much sense. He's going to be a $5 item, a hot ticket five-star item. That is for sure. But the Eagles have to be willing to spend money if they want to make money. And to make money, it's winning big-time games. And to win big-time games, it's taking away the middle of the field. Let's talk about the middle of the field some more. You just got rid of Kevin Byard. You released him with that June 1 designation. You're not going out in big fish hunting. Maybe that tier 2 defensive back territory that Lou mentioned yesterday. 
How about Kyle Duggar? How's that sound for you? Somebody who can run like a deer. I saw this guy down at the Senior Bowl. He literally runs like a gazelle. It's unbelievable to watch these athletes in person. But Kyle Duggar, you talk about somebody in a cover six defense with Sidney Brown, with Reed Blankenship, who is very, very good at protecting the run game, coming downhill, filling the alley. Can he be better when it comes to the pass game? Yeah, I think all the safeties that this team has can be better there. But what is Vic Fangio going to get out of these safeties? versatility. Kyle Duggar's a versatile guy. Is he a linebacker? Is he a free safety? Is he a strong safety? Doesn't matter. You can use him everywhere. Is he the top guy? No. Is he even like a 1B type of guy? No, I don't believe so. I think he's the middle of the pack in a position group that you know it's undervalued. I put him at $3 signs out of $5 signs. You're probably looking at a middle of the road type contract, like a $6 to $8 million deal for a, a safety. Do they want to pay him more than they paid CGJ last year? I don't know. Could you get him for five-ish million dollars a year? Probably. And if not, I think they stay right in that territory. But with $40 million of cap to play around with, I think you go out and give them some money because you need guys there and you're cheap at that position right now. You just lost $14 million from Kevin Byard. Heck, you got that money to go play with now. So on defense, I got one more move. It's not a big move. A lot of those big moves have already kind of been made with the Patrick Queen, with the Kyle Duggar, getting to the draft picks. But I make one more vet move. It's at cornerback. Fabian Moreau last year played for the Broncos, but he's a veteran guy who losing James Bradbury, all you have is youth there. I think he comes in after playing in a system that he would now just fill into, being in Bronco, being not in the Broncos, playing for the Broncos, playing for a cover six type of defense. Next to guys like Justin Simmons, who we have talked about acquiring. I think that's a guy that you can get for cheap. You don't need a lot of bodies at that position. I think you just need a little bit more veteran status when it comes to what they have gotten out of play in their careers, because you have a lot of youth there. You have Keely Ringo, who was in their trial by fire last year, has a lot of upside but I think you just need one more guy, especially if you lose James Bradbury that has been around the block. Moro, he's just going to be 30. It's perfect swing type of guy. You bring him in, he's like your 12th guy off the bench. But at the same time, I think he's a piece that can get you by until one of these young guys develops into potentially a starter a couple, what, let's say, weeks or months into the season. So moving on, we're going to the offensive side of the ball. On that Fabian Moreau signing, that was a $1 sign out of five. That's going to be a cheap deal, in my opinion. I'm going and paying two wide receivers and a running back in this class. And by paying, I mean no more than $2 signs. And Darnell Mooney is my $2 sign acquiring. Darnell Mooney can fly. And he can also catch the football. Something Quiz Watkins couldn't do. They need guys there. They need to change the position completely. And they need speed more than anything. Darnell Mooney is a perfect number three for you. And especially because you're going to add another guy in Van Jefferson, in my opinion, who could be that bigger bodied guy that could be a number four for you and fill in like that OZ type of role or the Zach, the Zach Pascal type of role, but present more of a route runner than the guys in the past. And Darnell Mooney will be your primary slot and potentially Brayton Covey could challenge him and potentially some youth through the draft could challenge him as well. But Van Jefferson, Darnell Mooney, two young guys getting their second contracts. I think Van Jefferson still has a lot of underused juice in his legs as a route runner. Same with Darnell Mooney. You missed on Quez Watkins. You didn't get out what you needed out of your next guy off the bench. It's unfortunate. Move on to the next one. But heck, Kellen Moore used a guy like Darnell Mooney? Absolutely, in my opinion. Could he use a Van Jefferson? Look at all the guys that he had for the Chargers last year. Those guys were giants, every single one of them. They're just bigger bodied wide receivers. Yeah, I think he could use Van Jefferson. You already got. 
top level guys at that position. You just need guys that can fill in for depth if need be that are similar, like Van Jefferson, a one out of five dollar sign, in my opinion, or somebody who can be an upgrade in the slot, your wide receiver three. Darnell Mooney shocked Lou didn't make this move. And also add through the draft. Sneakily, I think Brian Covey is going to get a lot more play at that position next year, but we'll just whisper that one into the airwaves. My last move outside of the house free agency. This one is at the running back position. You're probably thinking, when are we going to get there? When are we going to talk about running back? Well, here we are. In-house, all you have, Kenny Gainwell. I think you go into this market and you want to try and get a guy that's a little bit different from what you've had in the past. Via the draft, via free agency, maybe a bigger body guy, maybe somebody who can catch the football. We're going to go with the pass catcher here. I'm going to go with somebody who used to play wide receiver at Memphis, Antonio Gibson. We're going to fill up the backfield with guys from Memphis. Antonio Gibson is a much better receiver than he is straight running back. That's for sure. You'll probably have to make one more signing there, if not draft another guy. But what he presents in the pass game with Kellen Moore's offense, I think it's too good to pass up. You know what you saw in him playing him multiple times against Washington. I think it's clear anybody with eyeballs knew that he's a better pass catcher than he is running back. And I think that's evident if you just watch any film of him. And the Eagles need that. They didn't get it out of DeAndre Swift. Let's see if you could get it out of Antonio Gibson. But does Kellen Moore go into that room and say, I can use DeAndre Swift better and make that argument in six or half a dozen if it's him or Antonio Gibson? Maybe. But some moves have to be made. There's six for you. The big-time acquisition, Patrick Queen, Kyle Duggar, a bigger name, Antonio Gibson, bargain bin, Van Jefferson, bargain bin, Fabian Moreau, bargain bin, Darnell Mooney. He might be an economy buy. But that'll do it for in-house and outside house free agency moves. What's up next? The only house that isn't in or out. That's the college house down the street. We got some guys coming into the NovaCare complex coming up here on the Lockdown Eagles podcast. This next segment is brought to you by our sponsor, BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need an opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you in life. It's important that you let that out, especially to somebody who's unbiased in your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking the same thing this week. Let's start with the fact that we have to watch a Super Bowl that will not contain the Philadelphia Eagles, but will contain the team that you lost to and one of the teams that you beat to get there that quote unquote became a rival for you. But in all seriousness, for those major problems in your life, if you want to start therapy, there's no better place that I can recommend and that I've used and Lou has used as well. It is BetterHelp. So if you want to get started today, it is all online. It's flexible and suited to fit your schedule. Go to betterhelp.com slash lockdown and you'll get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P. Dot com slash lockdown. Once again, we thank BetterHelp for sponsoring the Lockdown Eagles podcast. All right, wrapping up this edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast, Gino Camilleri, also known as GMGC, taking over for GMHR, as is Howie Roseman. What he is going to be doing over the next couple of months, taking care of in-house, inviting some guys from out of the house to sign some contracts. And calling up some guys from down the street saying, hey, you know what? That college house you got, that's nice. How's this big penthouse sound in the National Football League? That's what the NFL draft is. It's a whole new ball game. And that's Howie Roseman's ball game. He's hit on the draft in the past. He's also had some big time misses. But I think if he is going to finally hit his final form, he has to change his philosophy on a lot of things. Paid that linebacker. Went out there and got him. But I don't think he changed his philosophy on a lot of things, and I think he sticks to the trenches in the draft, to be honest with you. I don't think he wavers. Even though this is what I want to do, I also know Howie Roseman. He loves to stick to the trenches. So let's get to it. Let's talk about the draft. What are the Eagles going to do? Pick 22. You're not going to like it. He's going to sit on the bench for a couple years. But Tyler Guyton, out of Oklahoma, you could not have... I mean, crafted a better just 
pick up and replace Lane Johnson with an Oklahoma right tackle that is very similar when it comes to athleticism, strength, his footwork, his ability to land punches at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Guyton makes so much sense, and you're probably like, come on, Gino. You couldn't have went with something fun like Kenyon Mitchell. I know Howie. Kenyon Mitchell would be the first time they picked a cornerback in the last 20-some-odd years. One thing that they love to do, it's take offensive linemen. I don't think they change that. I don't think they change how they draft. That's just one thing Howie Roseman doesn't do, especially at the top. In the middle rounds, yeah, you can make that argument. But up top, I don't think he's going to waver away from that. And it's a very good offensive line class. So why not go get a guy that, yeah, it might be a couple years before he takes a starting snap for you. But you got your replacement. They tried to do that with Jason Peters, but he never retired. They also tried to do that with Jason Kelsey. He never retired either. Maybe they shouldn't do that with Lane Johnson. But heck, Howie Roseman doesn't really think like that. He's going to go with Tyler Guyton if he's on the board. But that's all right. The picks get a lot more fun coming up. Pick 50. I went with Darius Robinson, the edge out of Missouri. Will he be there at pick 50? After the Senior Bowl, who knows? He was voted to be the most productive edge rusher at the Senior Bowl by a lot of the scouts there. Is he rising up draft boards? Oh, I'm sure of it. But does he still fall into that 30 to 50 territory? 100%. Could you get a Chris Braswell there? He was potentially on the board. Could you get Darius Robinson there? That's where you're probably going to have to hit on with these edge rushers because there's not the premier of the premier in this class. And if you want to go O-line early, that first pick in day two, maybe it even requires a little bit of a trade up. I think they still are trying to throw darts at the trench board. Let's get another guy. We have to replace Brandon Graham, Hassan Reddick, Josh Sweat. They're not going to be here forever. Darius Robinson, I think he fits that mold of what you have there already. Length, athleticism. He really is a ball of clay. Let's see what Vic Fangio can do with the edge rusher out of Missouri. The next pick, it's only a couple picks away. Went with Tyler Newbin, the safety out of Minnesota. Talk about can cover the whole field, versatile, move up and down the defensive formation. He is going to be a Swiss Army knife for you with Reed Blankenship, with Sidney Brown, and I still think they need to add more bodies at that safety position. You need to be four to five deep there because the last two guys are more than likely going to be special teamers, and that third guy is going to play a lot in today's day and age. And heck, you might even have to have four. Teams like Baltimore are playing three safeties all the time. you got to have four or five guys that can rotate in and out of that position. Tyler Newbin, go watch his Minnesota film. If you like smart football players at the safety position, is he going to wow you with his athleticism? No, he's going to wow you with his range. It's not off the charts. just does a lot of things very, very, very good. And you can get by being like that at the safety position in today's day and age. And at the corner position, guys who have length and can run, the Eagles love them too. I don't know how he fell to 97 in this mock draft, but Kyrie Jackson, if he is there, cornerback out of Oregon, I think a top 100 pick spot on a cornerback is something the Eagles love to do. They just absolutely love to. Anywhere from 50 to 100, they will spend a pick. I mean, heck, Keely Ringo was 104 last year, so just outside of that territory. But you look at Rasul Douglas, Sidney Jones, the, the names go on and on. Kyrie Jackson. I think he's going to get picked a lot earlier than 97, but you talk about a guy who's sitting at 6'3 and a half. He's got arm length for days, wingspan for days, can run. He's probably going to get 4'5", four, four, in my opinion. I think it'll be – heck, he might run like a 4'4", four, four, too. But he, he is a guy that you talk about fits in with what you do at the cornerback position, could potentially challenge Keely Ringo and the rest of those guys there to be the next guy up once the Darius Slays move on. If they get Kyrie Jackson at 97, that would be unbelievable, to be honest with you. But moving on, just a couple more picks. We went Dylan Johnson, running back out of Washington. That's the bigger body guy. Stands a little upright, runs a little high, but man, you look at what he did for Washington down the stretch. Just absolutely bruised, brat, battered. His leg was completely beat to heck. Carried that team a lot of the time when they couldn't get it going in the passing game. He's going to be an intriguing prospect when it comes to how much tread he has on his tires, but I think he's a guy that, if he's healthy, he can be a committee back with you with Antonio Gibson, with Kenneth Gainwell. Dylan Johnson, add him to the rotation. Talk about rotation. Add Jordan Jefferson out of LSU there as well. Add J.D. Bertrand with the next pick after that. 
I went Taj Washington, wide receiver, with the pick after that. And then my final pick, I went a punter. Torrey Taylor out of Iowa. The Eagles had to do it. It's about time. But that'll wrap it up for me. GMGC, turning the hat the other way, signing off after that one, playing Howie Roseman. We'll see what Howie wants to do. This is trying to get as close as what he will do when the draft does come around, when free agency does come around. We've done the show for going on seven seasons now. I think we have a good understanding of where this team is and where Howie Roseman likes to attack when it comes to Howie Roseman season, that is. But that'll do it for us here at the Locked on Eagles podcast, where you could catch us each and every day, five days a week, making us your first listen each and every day. And make sure you also go check out the first national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and on Fire TV over at Amazon. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find that over at Locked On Sports Today, where you can also get that on your Amazon Fire TV as well, where you can check us out on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's how we keep food on the table here at the Lockdown Podcast Network. The more subscription, the better. Thank you for tuning in each and every day. That'll do it for us here at LOE. Catch us with two more episodes this week, continuing to talk about Howie Rosen season, how things are going to evolve as we get closer to the combine, and who is Howie Roseman going to shell out some money for. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I'm Gino Camilleri signing off, and fly, Eagles fly.